Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another arcade repair video for you today. We had a friend who wants us to work on their Tempest arcade game. Unfortunately, the monitor is messed up a little bit, so we figured we would uh, film a little video while we did it and show you what we find. So we'll, uh, we'll check it out. It's got the color vector monitor, of course, and it's a super fun game. So we've got this one up here in the front of our store. Um, we'll take a look at it first and then we'll plug it up and see what the monitor does and see if we can fix it. Okay, folks, on the front of it, it's got these cool tack stickers. Check this out. Now, this sticker here, um, Atari actually put those on there. It says serial number 19850. Uh, and then check out these tack stickers. Um, Nebraska Department of Revenue. <laughs> We're in South Carolina. 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, and then they got a 2012 down there. So this thing was still making money up till 2012. That's crazy. Control panel's in pretty good shape. They always get banged up on the edge, but what can you do? And it's original. The way you can tell is it has the cigarette burns on it. Cabinet's got the normal scratches and scrapes. Right. So, I mean, since it's on wheels, I think I can just roll it around. Yep. So, at one point, it was part of the Servomation Corporation. Physical inventory, July of 84, District Branch 155. Okay. So I got the power brick down there. Now we're not going to do a bunch of repairs to it because I believe it works. It's just we're going to mess with the monitor a little bit. Got the uh, power brick down there. Before I plug them in though, I like looking at them. Just to make sure nothing is out of place. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a minute. All right, and then the power supply. All of that looks all original. Still has the Brady distributing tag on it, though. Man, that's weird. You can't tell by that tag when they put it on there, but uh, at some point that power supply was at Brady. So I'll bet this thing was. I'll bet it was swapped out of another game into there. Brady's our local distributor. So I'll bet after this came back from Nebraska, somebody swapped that in. Here's the game board. Everything looks cool. All right, and then here is the vector monitor. Trying to see if I see anything weird in there. There's some resistors on the uh, the uh, transistors on the on the uh, frame. And diodes that's some probably some kind of protection thing they had a deal where these things would burn up pretty frequently <laughs> it appears somebody has done some mods to keep that from happening and then here is the deflection board see the board up there at the top that's also the it's like an input protection board and then this is the little LV 2000 is that what it's called yeah, LV2000. So that little board replaces all the stuff in that area that makes the low voltage work. So this thing's been updated at some point to where it's probably uh, running better than it originally was. I'm looking in the in the um, high voltage cage and it looks like all the capacitors have been replaced in there as well. But again, we're not going to really do a bunch to this. We're mainly just going to look at this yoke. So the yoke is twisted. See the the neck board square. Look at the yoke. It's twisted around. And see that little yellow adjustment? Literally, you can loosen that with your hand and turn the yoke back. So we're probably going to do that. Um, the yoke still has the wedges under it to keep it at the right distance from the tube. So we may just all we need to do is straighten that out. But we're going to plug it up. See how it comes up, and then uh, 
see if we need to turn that a little bit. Okay, folks, so this is what we're getting on the screen. Everything is crooked. <laughs> yeah, that's almost certainly... It's not actually going to be the monitor, it's going to be the board. Can't really make it out too well, but... It looks like the blue's missing. This thing's... Oh, the blue's on there, it's just everything's slight, slanted and crooked. This thing's seen better days. And it's kind of there. Then it collapses. Yeah, shouldn't be doing that. Got issues. Watch when it does the Tempest thing. It draws the box crooked. With an extra line on it. See? That didn't line up right. It's going to be the board. But, to prove it's the board, we're going to hook up a scope to it and uh, see what it looks like on the scope, which basically you can use uh, to be another vector monitor. So uh, let me grab that. We'll hook it up to the board and see what it looks like on the scope. It'll probably be just as screwed up as this, but not quite as tilted because they've got the yoke turned. Okay, folks, so we got the scope out. We've got it hooked up to the X output and the Y output. We've got the scope in XY mode. And it's actually playing on the thing. It just looks like crap. So the problem's not a monitor problem. It's the board. It's just drawing crap all over the place that it shouldn't be drawing. And everything's crooked. There's extra lines. So that's the the triangular shaped one. Eventually it'll get back to the main screen. That's the valley shaped one. Mucho tripping. Let's see if it'll get the title screen or if it's just cycling through a bunch of weird stuff. Yeah, I don't even think it's running the attract like really how it's supposed to. I can't remember if they um, if they kill him on the attract mode and he goes back to the main screen. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off back on. See if we get something different. Game over, and please insert coin or whatever, a score at the top. There's the high score table. Notice it's crooked, so they, they tried to move the yoke to fix it, but the board was the problem. It's just outputting a crooked display, among other problems. <laughs> so, we got a board problem, not a monitor problem. The monitor's probably just fine, except for the yoke being crooked now. Um, so we got to figure out why it's outputting like that. So, uh, that's the fun part. Okay, folks, so we put it in test mode. We pulled the board out where we can test it with a logic probe and stuff. We've got it in test mode. Hit the uh, slam, hit hit the like the fire button, Joe, see if it changes the screen. Okay, you might have to hit the slam switch. I can't even remember how you... I remember that sound. It's... Hey, turn it down a little bit. <laughs> Oh, did you hit a button and it changed the screen? The again, yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, did you hit more switches? Yeah, I might have done that before. Okay. Okay, hit another switch. 
Okay, hit the switch again. Okay. All right, hit it again. All right, let's leave it there. That's pretty interesting. Okay, hit it again. All right, turn the spinner now. I think it, one of these is a test where it'll test the spinner. Okay, none of that's relevant anyway. All right, hit it again. Okay, on this screen, I think it tells you if there's ROM errors. And I don't, I can't tell because of just how screwed up it is. Um, basically, it's supposed to be a bunch of zeros in a row. Uh, if I could figure out how to get some of that. Some of that um, trash off of there, like all the retrace lines. Boop, boop, boop. Well, I think we've probably got a problem in the output section. Um, so this is X, this is Y. <sighs> But see, I don't really know that for sure either because they've got the monitor turned sideways in the game. Hmm. We're going to figure that out first. Is since the monitor's turned vertically, which one's X and Y? Right? But um, basically, it doesn't have the, it's got the left to right position pretty much right, but it doesn't have the up and down position, which would be Y normally, but I don't know if it'll be Y um, the way it's mounted in the game. So there's some kind of problem in the Y output, I believe, but I got to figure that out to make sure um, that, that that's how it displays in the game. But basically in the Y output, there's a couple little op amps. It might be something like that. Uh, so maybe we'll get lucky and it'll be something in that area. If it's something in the vector state area, much harder to fix. The part I didn't like was that how whenever it draws the Tempest logo and it collapses, there's a line that's crooked. That's usually stuff like that is in the, the vector state part, not the vector output part. So that would be much harder to fix. But a lot of times it would give you an error if you had a problem with like the math box or anything. So... Um, I'm going to uh, see what we can do about the op amps. I got to figure out though if that's X or Y first. Okay, so I thought of how I could figure out X versus Y. So this, if I just turn the linearity pot or the centering pot on the board, Y centering is how it should be. So that's like it always is. X is left and right. Y is up and down, just like. It ought to be, so that's good to know. <laughs> so I think our problem is on the y-axis because it's not up and down in the right spot. It's too high. That's what we're going with. So I think we got a y-deflection problem. And that's my story and we're sticking to it. Okie dokie. So here is the y out. This is our problem. It comes from this TL082. These are known for going bad, so I'm going to put one in, in a socket, just to confirm that that's not it. I'm also, at the same time, going to replace this capacitor. This thing was bent a little bit just now, and it's right there at the output of the Y output. It could be that capacitor's broken or something. It doesn't look very good. You see the scratches around it? Something happened there. Um, this is the one on the Y, but it, I mean the X out, but it seems to be fine, and that's the same cap. So there's just something, you know. So I'm going to swap the TL082, and I'm going to swap that cap. It's a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Um, and if that doesn't do it, I think these MC1495s apparently give issues too, but I'm, I think I might actually try just swapping the DAC if I've got them. Hmm. What are those? LF13201N. Hmm. Wonder if I have any of those. Might have to look into that. Wait, that's not. 
That's not even the deck anyway. The 6012, I think, is the deck. I might have that wrong. But anyway, we'll see what we got. So I'm going to start with uh, our TL-082 and that capacitor just to make sure it's nothing simple like that. Okay, so I put in the new cap and the new TL-082, and that didn't do anything. It's exactly the same. So I'm going to check just to make sure that all of our signals are coming into the DAC, but... Sometimes if you've got problems, you will get the signal still into the DAC. They just won't be the right signal. So we're just going to check it with a logic probe. Good pulsing. Uh, so I think we're good, but I'm going to try... Uh, swapping that chip to see if we get anything a little different. Um, those are known for failing, so that's next up on the list. Alright folks, so we got a new one in there. Boy, it swapped out real good. It's a DAC312. Good sub for it. Alright, so we're going to pop it in and see if that changed anything or if we're still on the hunt. Okay, so here's the schematics. We've been checking the signal right here, and it's screwed up. So we replaced this TL82, didn't fix it. And then there are these switches back behind it that have something to do with uh, like pin cushioning and stuff like that. But what you can do is, before those, there is another TL82. So it's hard to check these, but what you can do is you can hook up your your uh, probes to right here. If you if you look, the signal was created and just comes to here and passes through to go to the switches. And there's two sets of them. There's that, and then there's this one. So they just kind of do pin cushion correction, and then this last TL82 amplifies it all. So you can check here, and it'll just have a smaller image. So I've hooked a, this on the X and the Y, and everything looks pretty much the same. But it could be this TL-082. <laughs> um, so here's the DAC that we replaced. I didn't realize there were two of them. So I'm going to try swapping it. If that's not it, we've got something back in the vector state, which is a lot harder to figure out, but we'll look into it. But uh, let's swap D11 first and see if that changes anything. All right, folks, so that's what we've got for now. It's definitely not in the output section, I don't believe. It's going to be farther back in the vector state machine, which is harder to troubleshoot, but we'll figure it out. But uh, we'll have to cut the video here and do another one. So make sure to give, leave your comments below. I'm sure you all have ways to tell me how I'm doing this wrong. Uh, make sure to give me a thumbs up for at least attempting to do it. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Now, have you checked out our website? Go to lionsarcade.com. We have all of our arcade games that we have for sale, pinball machines, jukeboxes, all listed on there. You can check them out. We also have a parts page where a lot of the parts that we use whenever we do repairs are on there. Uh, there's also links to Amazon on there and down below. If you go to Amazon to buy something, if you click our link before you go there, it gives us a tip. So thank you to everybody that's been doing that. And on our parts page, we also have our, some of our t-shirts and things like that if you're interested in that to help support the channel. And finally, don't forget to check out my brother Donnie, who is literally our brother Donnie. Uh, if you like watching us work on these old arcade games, you may like watching us work on old buildings. He's got a couple buildings that he bought in a, a small town near here in the downtown area we're trying to fix up to help revitalize the downtown area. So we'll see you over on the My Brother Donnie channel. And this is what we're working with. We'll have to keep messing with it. We'll see you on the next video.